the field of CLL is at a place that we are um, no more choosing the lesser of two evils. So patients have um, very good options and I think it's mutual decision making. When I sit down with my patients, I always tell them that uh, we have the data with BTK inhibitors is older. Um, Ibrutinib was approved for CLL um, in February 2014 and then um, got its approval in uh, November 2019 and uh, Obinutuzumab and Enoclax got its approval um, in the spring of 2019. So, um, they're all really good agents. Bidibrutinib and acalabrutinib, they're lifelong treatments, so I always tell patients that you will be on this medicine as long as you tolerate the medicine well and your disease is responding. Whereas venetoclax or venetuzumab is a time-limited regimen for 12 months, so if someone can wrap their head around the fact that they have to be on a treatment lifelong, then I think in that case, venetoclax or venetuzumab is a better option for them. And we always take into account side effect profile. BTK inhibitors um, have um, a risk of atrial fibrillation and cardiac dysrhythmia. So if someone is coming in with a history of atrial fibrillation and they, or they already have some cardiovascular risk factors, I think venetoclax or venetuzumab is a better option for them. But at the same time, venetoclax or vena is also associated with cytopenias. Um, and um, the risk of cytopenias uh, was 48% in the CLL14 trial. So if someone is going to be on a regimen for 12 months, constantly being cytopenic can pose some challenges.